If you know much about the US e-bike market, you probably already know about Ride1Up's electric bikes, which are known for being high-value, affordable models, popular among commuters and recreational riders alike. But I can pretty much guarantee you've never seen the company as close as this. Hey everyone, Micah here with Electrek, and today we've got an invitation from Ride1Up to come visit their factory and see how they build their electric bikes. Come along with us while we check it out. Not only did I get the chance to visit Ride1Up's factory in China, but I was able to get there along with the company's founder, Kevin Duggar, which gave me the opportunity to see how the drive for quality assurance and overall positive riding experience starts from the very top. For Kevin, starting a bike company was something that was practically in his genes. I mean, I grew up in a Dutch household and I would go back to Holland every year. I saw the life over there and the quality of life and how people interacted with their environment, uh, how on a neighborhood street it would be quieter when people were riding by. There's a lot of benefits. I, I saw to that uh, sort of culture and lifestyle and I would take that back with me where I grew up in, uh, in Davis, California, which is a big bike town. And that's kind of what I wanted to see was less cars on the road, more bikes on the road, and people basically being happier and living better, better lives. One of the things I was interested in learning from the Ride One Up factory was how they deal with quality control. Because I've seen a lot of e-bike factories by now, and the general formula for putting bikes together is not all that different. But what does vary, and what truly impacts the ownership experience of using that bike, is the attention to detail on the production line and the level of quality inspection. For D2C, or direct-to-consumer companies, that's a critical step since customers are not receiving their new ride in a bicycle shop. As a D2C company, if somebody receives a product and has an issue, it's a lot more problematic than a bike shop opening up a bike and it having an issue, and you have a trained mechanic ready to fix it. We can't have our customers receiving a bike with a problem out of the box. It's just gonna ruin their experience. So for us, we have to triple, quadruple check that nothing could be out of line from the moment it's packaged. I mean, we have multiple steps of QC and our third party QC team to ensure that these, you know, a customer receives the bike, it's gonna be flawless. The first step of assembling the bikes, in fact, is quality inspection of the components, such as the frames, which are welded and painted at another facility since this factory is in a lower emissions part of the country without heavy industry. If any small imperfection is found, such as this little nick in the paint here, it will be marked for remediation to ensure that the frame doesn't get built into a bike before it's fixed. At the same time as the frames are being prepared, wheels are being built. Workers load the spokes into the rims by hand, and then a machine will get the spoke tension close to where it needs to be for each of the 36 spokes. But the precision task of truing the wheels is then performed by specialized machines that use various sensors to measure the wheel trueness and then automatically adjust the spoke tension. Here the machine is working on the various spokes to move that yellow dot into the center of the diagram, indicating a perfectly tensioned spoke. If for some reason there's an issue with one wheel, the machine automatically diverts it into a separate chute for further inspection. Once the wheels are ready, disc brakes and cassettes are added as necessary, and then they're loaded onto a hanging conveyor system ahead of the assembly line. Remember those frames from earlier? As the wheels are being prepared, the frames move on to prep for the line, where they get their electronics installed inside of the frame tubes. This is a Ride One Up Portola bike, their new folding model, and its electronics are run through the frame to hide the majority of the wires. The controllers are each scanned into an intelligent management control system that records which components were installed on which frames and bikes, providing accountability for any future issues. If, for example, they should learn months from now that a few dozen controllers they received from a supplier had an issue, they can find the exact bikes those went into and then find the new owners. From here, the prepped frames are moved to the assembly line where a series of workers do the majority of the assembly. The pedal drivetrain is installed, including the bottom bracket, the chain ring, the crank arms, and the pedals. For these Portola e-bikes, the folding mechanism is installed next. 
treated bolts are used to ensure they remain corrosion free and thread locker keeps them from vibrating out weeks or months down the road. All of the tools are also frequently calibrated to ensure that they're applying the correct amount of torque for each fastener. From here, fenders get installed next, followed by the rear motor. The handlebars are then installed, along with the front fork. With the bars on, the brakes can be set up and the wiring harness can be wrapped to create a neater and tidier appearance. From here, the bike is largely assembled but not yet tuned. A quick check ensures that the chain and motor are properly mounted, and then the bike is sent off to the next station for tuning. This is where the shifter will be calibrated for smooth gear transitions without chain jumping or grinding, and the brakes will also be dialed in. The battery is then added and is scanned into the intelligent management system, just like the controller, motor, and other major parts were. Now the bike is fully assembled and it gets its first riding test to make sure the gears are shifting properly and the bike rides well. On a parallel line, Ride1Up CF Racer 1 is also being assembled. This is a much higher end carbon fiber bike, and so the workers on this line are the more experienced of the factory's employees. There are also no power tools on this line. Everything is installed using hand tools to avoid overstressing the carbon fiber. Much of the assembly is similar to the Portola, with the frames first being inspected and then loaded onto the assembly line. As one worker installs the fork and handlebars, another installs the battery inside of the frame. And again, everything is scanned along the way for tracking. The brakes are then mounted on the frame, though they're not bled yet, and the wheels and the drivetrain components are installed as well. These higher quality brakes require a finer touch, which is why the more experienced workers are on this line. Once the brake cables are prepared, the bike is sent off to the next station where the brake lines are bled, which itself is quite a learned skill to ensure crisp braking. This CF Racer 1 e-bike is really interesting to me because, like several of Ride1Up's higher-end models, it's designed to offer a much more premium riding experience than you could ever get from most direct-to-consumer bike brands. We don't want to just build bikes that you can go to another company and find the same product. You know, we, we wanted to build bikes that you can't find anywhere else. I mean, you can't find this a, a, a 28 pound. You can find it. Uh, you can find it from a canyon, you can find it from a specialized, and you can find it at a bike shop for about $5,000. But we wanted to make it more accessible. And we wanted to make more unique offerings and options accessible to people that maybe don't have $5,000 to spend on that. Once the CF Racer e-bikes are finished being calibrated, they're brought to a corral ahead of inspection. In addition to the line inspections and that first riding inspection, a full several dozen point quality inspection takes place for all models. Anything that isn't correct is marked so the bike can be pulled out of the line and sent for adjustments. The inspector just found that the uh, folding handle here was too tight, so they marked that with tape and they're gonna go back and fix any little small things that made it through to this step. The few bikes that don't make it through have to be further analyzed and adjusted to pass all of the quality inspections. The bikes that do pass are now completed, though they're not yet ready for packaging. There's actually one more quality test from third-party inspectors that ride one up contracts. These are not the same as the factory employees, and so they come in with new eyes and new inspection methods to verify that nothing slipped past any of the previous in-house quality checks performed as part of the factory's own inspections. All of the test riders also have their own saddle, so that the first butt to touch the saddle that shifts with the bike is the rider's own. In-house QC step is good, and obviously, you know, digitally tracking any mistakes and, and the bike from start to finish is, is you know, crucial, but having that third-party external QC has, has made all the difference. Once the bikes pass all of those previous rounds of inspections, they can finally move on to packaging. Here, the bikes move down another conveyor system. Ride One Up has worked to remove all of the foam from its packaging and nearly all of the plastic. There are still a few plastic cable ties holding the packaging in place, but the company will soon be switching over to reusable cable ties so that they can be removed for the customers to reuse for their own cable tying tasks in the future, instead of just needing to be cut off and thrown away. Our core values really are to be environmentally friendly, right? To not be wasteful. And if we're gonna send more plastic 
in the world with sending our bikes out there. It's just, it, it goes against what we're trying to build. Realistically, recycling in the United States is not at all it cracked up to be. It's not all that we've been promised. So even if people aren't going to be able to recycle every component of that of the packaging on, on our bikes, at least we're going to make everything biodegradable, uh, less plastic waste, anywhere we can, because you know every bit counts. Interestingly, there is one last little inspection point at the very end, where the box is precision weighed to make sure nothing was left out of it. If a fender or a piece of packaging was missing, it would show up on the scale. But there were around five different inspections before this point, so that's really just one last failsafe. Spending a day at the factory seeing how Ride One Up builds its bikes left me with quite an impression. Sure, there are a lot of bikes in the US market, and there are lots of companies. The way Ride One Up stands out is by offering models that you can't get from others, and by offering the ones that you can with better value propositions. That's why it's so important to build them right the first time, and ensure that they use components that will last down the road. It's a philosophy that seems like a no-brainer, but it's far from commonplace in the industry. Thanks for watching everyone, we hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, why don't you give it a thumbs up? And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any of our future electric vehicle videos. We'll see you here next time.